Hey y'all and welcome back. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. And in today's video, we are going back in time to revisit an older palette. I was going back and looking at my top 10 palettes from 2019, and there were so many palettes that I mentioned that year as being my top 10 that I was wanting to revisit. I decided to revisit all of them and then re-rank them and give you guys my updated review from two, three years in the future on if I would, you know, name them my top 10, if I do still think they are worth it, and where I would rank them. Because at the time I wasn't really I didn't really rank them. I just said my top 10. So I thought that'd be fun and continuing on that adventure we have another palette today to put on my eyes and try out once again that I mentioned in my top 10 favorites from 2019 and it is the Gimme Glow Juicy Olive Palette. I remember this was my first palette from Gimme Glow that I ever tried and I remember when she first sneaked it I was so excited because these tones were just so me. It was very short. It was a very tiny little concise palette with the color story but the tones I just absolutely love. So this was my first dive into Gimme Glow and I'm super excited to get to dive back in and try it once more. So yeah, that's what we're going to be chatting about. I'm going to get in a little bit closer and let's just start playing with these shadows on my eyes once again and we can see if I love it just as much as I used to. And I kind of forgot, but my re-ranking of 2019 palettes is going to be the very last video that I do during Kate's Giving. So at the end of the month, you'll see where I rank them. And yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and revisit this palette. All right, so I just used um, a little primer from Zoeva, the eyeshadow primer, and let's go ahead and dive in. I definitely know I want to use this on my outer corner. It's a great shade to use on my outer corner. I'm going to use both of the shimmers on my lid with the emphasis of this shade because it's my favorite, but we're going to do a little bit of this as it transitions out to this shade. And then for my crease, I'm probably going to stick to this with a little bit of this to deepen it up. And then we'll throw this one on the lower lash line just so we can say we used them all. That sounds good to me. Hopefully that sounds good to you. We can go ahead and jump right in. Let me grab a brush. I actually just recently washed all my brushes. So I'm a little overwhelmed at how many clean brushes I have to work with. Usually I'm trying to find a favorite brush that I can't find. And now I have all my favorites. So I'm like, ooh, which one shall I use today? All right, we're just gonna go with the classic favorite of mine for the outer corner, the L210 brush from Estelazzi. One of my favorites for sure. And let's go ahead and go into cocktails. So for this video, as we're chatting, I thought it'd be kind of fun to give a little bit of an overview on kind of a life update. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen this already or if I'm going to be putting it up, but I did do a bit of a life update on our renovating of the house, and I recorded that like a week ago at this point, but I felt like I wasn't very... I, I, like I rambled a lot, so I didn't really get through or like share as much information as I had wanted to, and then also like I was thinking over it, and I felt like I kind of generalized some areas, so... I'm gonna try it again. <laughs> We're gonna talk about it. Hopefully I won't repeat too much info, but if I do repeat some information, that's gonna be in that video. But um, hopefully I'll be able to give you guys some other information because I was gonna focus mostly on the house because we bought a house in, let's see, sometime in May. We bought an old house that needed a lot of work. I kind of always knew like, you know, HGTV used to do those houses where people would buy it and either, you know, flip it to sell or they would buy a rundown one that needed a lot of work and then they would fix it up to live in. And I kind of always like looked at that and be like, I don't think I would enjoy that process just because of all like the hidden surprises and all that and after doing it with uh, this house I, n I definitely know I don't like to do that. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. If you're someone who likes to flip houses or, you know, buy a house that needs to be a fixer-upper and, you know, you enjoy the process of getting it back to its former glory, that's awesome, but me, it's it's not for me. Too stressful and too many decisions and whatnot. So anyway, um, but yeah, we bought a house in May. The house uh, was such an older house. It had, um, it needed a complete like house rewiring because it had old wiring. I think copper and it, or no, aluminum and it needs copper wiring. I don't know, whatever type of wiring that they used in the 1970s needed to be updated because it was like fire hazard and stuff like that. So we had to do that. It needed a new roof. It needed... A lot of things. So anyway, let's go in. I'm gonna get a tinier brush and let's go into Dirty Martini. And we were impatient, so we ended up uh, buying a chicken coop and chickens that's over at the house already that we just go over every day to take care of and play with and whatnot. And we've just been, that's been our life for the past, since May, and it's now November. And uh, we've been working at getting the house renovated and whatnot. It's been slower pace than we wanted, but in the grand scheme of things, I suppose it's not too terribly long since we know some people and we've just, you know, heard about like with the supply chain issues that some people have to wait a really long time. We're still waiting on some stuff like the house has old windows and all that. We have to replace all them to hopefully help with our electric bill not be so crazy. And uh, those are all like back ordered. So we have no idea when we're actually going to get our windows in to be able to replace them but we're not waiting to move in to the house until then we're just gonna 
live there until uh, until the windows arrive, basically. Um, so anyway, in the grand scheme of things, uh, we moved, we bought the house mid-May, I think, and Lord willing, if everything continues to go well, the house will be livable in like another week or two in the middle of November. When I think about it like that, it's like, oh, it hasn't been that long, Katie. But when you're living it, it feels like it's been a very long time. I'm gonna go into a dry martini. Yeah, dry martini. That shade that I use, dirty martini, is a lot deeper than you anticipate when you actually use it. And I think I remember that from my original review. So anyway, um, yeah, it's just felt so very long. And I think the whole process of like, you know, having several younger children, being pregnant, moving, like we moved to an entirely new house like a week or two before we bought the uh, the house with land and started the renovations. It's just been a lot and there's always felt like so much going on that um, it feels a lot longer than I think it actually is. And like we, myself, uh, myself and my husband and the kids all feel like very burnt out at this point. You know, it's been, I would say the last month has been the hardest of everyone just kind of be like, do we have to go get in the car to drive over to the other house again? Like, can't we just stay home? Or can't we just live at the other place? Because also, like, the house that we're currently living in, um, while our forever home, Lord willing, gets uh, renovated, it's a lot smaller. And so we've been also living in a tinier, tinier home and all that. And that definitely kind of gets, you know, after a while, if I'm not staying on top of keeping things tidy, it can get a little irritable for everyone involved when there's just stuff everywhere. Because we went from a super big house to a house, I I think it was half the size of our house that we lived in at the beginning of the year. It was a pretty, pretty big uh, or drastic downsizing and then the house that we're going to is going to be larger than this one. So it's just kind of been like, hey, we only have to live in here for a Lord willing a couple months. It's fine if it's a tiny house type of thing. We're definitely ready to have a little bit more elbow space and also just be able to go through our stuff because we moved and uh, put our house on the market so quickly, we weren't really able to go through and kind of get rid of old stuff or declutter or just kind of minim minimize the stuff that we own. That's definitely something we're looking forward to doing um, once the forever home is ready to be moved in. As we move things over, we wanna go through everything and kind of minimize and get rid of old things so that we just don't have all this random junk <laughs> in our house. So anyway, we're pretty we're pretty burnt out at this point and very much looking forward to moving in. So hopefully, I'm not sure when this video will go up, but I think it's gonna go up around when we're moving in if everything goes according to plan and we're able to move in. I think it'll be going up around the time that we're moving in and we're just, we're so very excited. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to be in that house. It's definitely come a long way um, with it being a fixer upper. Like I really didn't wanna buy a fixer upper. However, the house had so much land and the price was like really good for how much land we were getting. And also there was a lot of unique aspects to the house that my husband and I found very endearing. Like I absolutely love the living area, like the family room into the kitchen area. It's very open concept and has like a th cathedral roof with like exposed beams. It's beautiful. So there was a lot about the house that we loved even though like when we first moved in, <laughs> It had a lot of dated aspects to the house, and I think that's something I talked about the bathrooms, how dated the bathrooms were in the other video, so I won't kind of rehash that, but the bathrooms were definitely very, very dated. Um, toilets were like questionable if they were working type of thing. It seemed before we bought it to be worth the effort to renovate it and kind of bring it back to its former glory type of thing. And also, like I said, the land really was what the selling point for us with the house. Like the house I think is cute, not to say that we bought a house that we don't like. We, we my husband and I really do like the house. We think it's beautiful. We love the the characteristics of it, the uniqueness of it, even all the, the weird uniqueness of it. It's still, it's, it's the home. It makes you know, the home unique. I'm gonna go into cocktails down here. So we still really do like it, but the land is really what we were really excited to buy. Okay, now I'm gonna go into Vacatini. So anyway, it's been it's been a uh, quite the journey, but I was gonna talk, I'm almost halfway done with my makeup, but I was gonna talk about like the aspects of the house, the old house that we had to uh, change. And one was the roof. It was a very old roof that they, it was partially, it was partially uh, updated at one point, I think in 2006 or something, but it was a home, done job so like it was a little questionable and also like I said it was part partially done so that means some of the roof was like the original roof from like the 70s so the roof was definitely a little like um the building inspector was like you want to replace that soon like one big gust of wind I'm surprised the roof hasn't already gone so those were the two big things on our list is getting a new roof on and doing the rewiring 
We also had to re-insulate the house because there was little to no. In the my favorite aspect of the house, which is like the cathedral living area, um, I absolutely love it. It's so beautiful. But I guess the people who did it did it such like a DIY type of job. Like they really tried to do as much as they could themselves, I guess. So um, some of the, some of the areas were a little bit like. Oh dear, they really did try to cut corners. So like the cathedral roof, which is beautiful, had absolutely zero insulation. On the other side of the beautiful open beams and the wood that you could see inside the house is where they laid like the the shingles for the roof on top. Like there was no, nothing between that. The wiring was run between, like behind the wood that you could see on the inside of the house. They just laid it there and then put the shingles on top and stapled away or nailed away, whatever they do to shingles. Like it was a very interesting, <laughs> The people we got to do our roof was like, how is this roof, the how is this house still standing? Like, how is there not a fire? So, yeah, we had to do a bunch of uh, re insulating the house because a lot of either the house, the areas that did have insulation was barely anything there anymore, or like the cathedral roof had zero insulation. So, we had to work around with our uh, contractor to figure out how to get insulation there and still keep the, the prettiness of the roof and not totally have to, you know, enclose it all in, that type of thing. So that was definitely a challenge that we had to overcome. We had to replace the gutters because those were all falling off. What else did we have to do? Bathrooms. Like I said, super, super dated bathrooms. And just like, and I, I went on, I do know that that's one thing I went on about in the other video, so I'm not gonna go into it too long, but I didn't like the bathrooms, not only in just how old they were, but just functionality from like day to day. I didn't wanna have to function with them. So when we put in the offer on that house, my husband and I were talking, I was like, the bathroom's gotta go. Like, uh, the kitchen is a little outdated and could be, you know, could, we could have renovated the kitchen to make it function a little bit better and just be a little bit more spacious, but I was like, that I can live with. It's spacious enough. It's definitely much bigger than the kitchen I'm in right now. But the bathrooms, the bathrooms had to go. I'm gonna pop a little glitter primer and then we'll put the last two shimmers on the lid. I've just been rambling and I haven't, I forgot that during these videos, I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about if the formula, if I still like the formula and whatnot, but like, all those mats blended so beautifully. If anything, like my only word of caution would be that some of the mats are a lot more pigmented and darker than you might think, like that shade I put all in the crease. But I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. And they all blended out so beautifully. So I'm excited to see how the shimmers still feel. But getting back to the house, let's talk about the house a little bit more. What else? So bathrooms had to be uh, updated. They were definitely 70s bathrooms, um, very unique. Very unique. They have a uh, toilets that adhere to the wall because the I guess they use whatever they use for piping into the the foundation of the house. They didn't put it in instead of putting it into the foundation of the house like I think you typically would. They just stuck it into the walls to go out. So our toilets have to be like wall mounting. Not a huge deal, I guess. It's just a quirk of the house that we didn't realize that we would have to live with. Um, like I said, I'm gonna go into this one first and then just use a little bit of that to blend out. We also had to redo all the flooring in the house because they had kind of like a patchwork job done in that like some areas was like, I think it's called linoleum where you kind of just unroll it out and stick it to the floor. It had, it, that was in the kitchen area, but it like, they did it themselves in that they laid it down. I don't think they glued it down because anytime you open the front or the, the door that goes from the garage into the kitchen, you'd open it and where the, you know, because it was near the edge, the wind would catch it and the whole floor would like ripple from the gust of wind. So I don't, I don't think flooring is supposed to do that. <laughs> so it had that in the kitchen and then in the rest of the house it had some type of like slated wood floor, but uh, it was a little bit interestingly done. Like, you know, it wasn't quite professionally installed, I guess you could say, but that one was fine. Like it, that flooring, it wasn't my favorite. I didn't like the coloring, but I could live with it. It wasn't so terrible. But then in the hallway going down to the bedrooms and in all the bedrooms, there was carpet that really needed to be replace just for you know getting fresh new carpet into the house and also I didn't want carpet in the hallway again it looked like it was installed in the by the homeowner so it was a little bit like of some areas was like a little bit of a ripple there a little bit of a crinkle here that type of thing so when we bought the house we decided to get new carpets and um, get new carpets and redo the flooring 
through the whole house. At first I was like, can we just redo the flooring in the kitchen? But it was kind of like, if you're gonna do it there, it's not gonna match the rest of the house. If you eventually want to get that out as well and redo that, then might as well do it also. We ended up redoing all the flooring in the house, which is gonna look pretty and beautiful, but um, I'm also, I think this is an aspect that I don't like renovating. I don't, I hate spending large chunks of money. And so anytime we had to like make a decision on the cost of things, I kind of was just like, um, can we spend as little as we possibly can? And my husband was like, we're doing this to last a long time. We need to think, you know, budget of course, but like let's make sure we're spending on quality and making sure we're getting something durable to last a long time. Not so focused on just spending as little bit as we can, like going with the cheapest option. So he was much better at being logical there. I, I just, I get, I don't know, it stresses me out and I'm always just like, I don't want to spend any money. So I didn't like making those big decisions. This shade is really pretty. Almost too similar to that first shade. I mean, they're different. Different, but I feel like you could have just had that first shade in there and then you could have just run a little bit of any of these mattes over it to get the same look but they're both very pretty a little bit of fallout that will hopefully clean up easy so anyway um what else do we do those are the major things um we still are ha you know gonna use whatever um AC HVAC unit that the uh, the house came with but in a couple months once we recover <laughs> and have moved in and saved up a little bit more money we do need to replace them but we're really hoping they'll just make it at least like one more one more season since they've made it this long so that we can save up some money before buying a whole new um HVAC unit, but we do plan to buy, um, a, you know, install something different because what it has now is actually quite interesting. Any builder that came into our house to quote it, it was like kind of like the our contractor loved to take them and see this aspect of it because it was so different. He's like, I've never, I've done contracting work for years and years, never seen anything like it. But um, in the main area of our house, because it has the beautiful cathedral ceiling that the homeowners just put shingles on top of, and there was no like, there was no uh, insulation or anything on the other side. They couldn't put any of the usual like piping. It's not called piping, but you know, for the HVAC, the, the tunneling that takes the air throughout the house, they couldn't put it in the ceiling like you usually did. So they actually poured it, they like put it in the foundation of the house before the, they poured the concrete for the floor. So all of our, um, you know, air vents and stuff like that are in the ground on the floor, just kind of facing up to push the air up because it's not, there's no place in the ceiling for it. So that was definitely very unique. And then also because of that, the HVAC unit, when they installed it for the part that goes in the house, they installed it upside down because it had to go into the flooring. So unique, so weird. And like I said, it was a aspect of the house that our contractor loved to show everyone whenever they came to work on the house and be like, hey, have you ever seen this? But yeah, so unique, so interesting. Um, let me see if it's going to look any different if I line this or should I just take a black? feel like I should just take a black, yeah. All right, those shimmers are beautiful. The only thing that I kind of regret is that I have my face already done because it definitely made a mess. I'm gonna line my eyes really quick and then we can close out. Well, you know what? I always say this, but let's go, why do I do this? I always do this to my, my, myself. I annoy myself when I edit because I do this so much and I'm just like, Katie, can you just not? Um, let's go ahead and do an inner corner highlight. I wanna use one of these, but let's get one with a green shift to go with it because there's no really bright shade in here, I have the Nightlife palette from Gimme Glow. I wonder, nah, none of those. Oh, you know what? I also have, let's do this shade Oop, right here. This is from Gimme Glow as well. Got it not too long ago. It's called Electric Unicorn. I think it's like a multi -crown? You guys know I'm bad at it. I think it's supposed to be a multi -crown, but it's very, very pretty. It has a more strong pink shift, but it does have like a green shift in there. So hopefully that'll work. But yeah, anyway, um, I think that's about it. We had a lot of other work. Oh my goodness, so intense um, that needed to be done with it. But those were the main things that um, took, took the biggest chunk of our budget. But those were the main big things that we had to spend on. And uh, we're so close to being done. I'm so excited. And then once we move in there, we're excited to start working on the outside of the house because we've tried to, been mainly focused on the inside of the house, getting it to the point where we can live in it. But then once we move there, we want to start putting up fencing and stuff so that we can get some animals. We're not 100% on which animals we're getting because we're still doing a ton of reading and 
I don't know, it feels like such big decisions, but I think we're going to start off with some, we wanna definitely get a dog, kind of just protection for the kids, but also for the animals. And then we want to do uh, pigs and probably goats. Those are the two we're leaning towards because we have a big kind of pasture. It's not a pasture now, but we're gonna make it into a pasture. We have a huge front yard that we're going to, div uh, to divide up and fence off to be the pasture land that we think will be perfect for having animals. And then we have just so much space in the back that we would like to eventually start to clear and goats and pigs are both really good animals to uh, to do that kind of clearing and kind of getting the underbrush down with the goats also we'd like to eventually when we get used to them breed them to do some milk because that would be awesome to be able to get our own milk and make some cheese. It's such a learning experience and I'm really excited that we're like so close to starting it. Like I said, we have chickens there that we've been, you know, kind of dipping our toes into already, but it'll, it'll just be so nice once we're there and we don't have to do the constant kind of back and forth and whatnot. So, you know, I'm not even gonna do liner. I'm gonna refresh my mascara and then we can close out this video. So I'll be right back. All right, so here is the final look. Per usual, I'm gonna stick up the close up so you guys can see how the look turned out. Oh, and you guys can obviously see, I changed up my lipstick. I used to have the Natasha Denona uh, My Dream lipstick, I think is what it's called, and I switched it out for the Lime Crime Lip Blaze in the shade Herb. Love that lipstick, and I just felt like the color went with this look so much more. Like I said, I decided to opt out of doing liner, and I kind of don't miss it. It's nice and grungy, and it looks nice and blended out. Maybe you could have done a little bit more on the outer edges, but I don't know. Mommy doesn't have time right now. I need to get going, so I have time to film one more video before nap time's over. But anyway, all that to say, I really like how the look turned out, and the eyeshadows are just as good as I remember. They're so very nice. I love the formula of the mattes and shimmers when it comes to Give Me Glow. It's such a solid, such a beautiful formula to work with. Um, like I said, the only thing I think I could have wished is maybe some color choices just to make it a little bit more unique and different. Like if this uh, darker shimmer had been switched out for something like I used on my inner corner, that would have been amazing. And even one of these uh, like mid-tone uh, mattes in here could have been switched out for like a neon type of lime green or like a grungy le uh, neon green. Does that even make sense? Just so that the looks, yes, you could get this really dark grungy looks but you could also go a bit brighter if you wanted that type of thing so that's really the only con that or a critique that I can see when I look at this palette because overall it's just as good as I remember so long ago so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys here liked hearing a little bit of an update and just kind of where we we're at with the whole house renovations the house that we bought and yeah hopefully uh, end of November going into December I'm going to have a different background because we're gonna be moving again it's gonna be a smaller closet that I'm moving into so I know it's gonna take me a while to figure out how to put everything Thing and figure out how to film and whatnot. So I'm hoping to get all of Kate's giving pre-filmed before we move just so I can have all those videos done, filmed. I don't have to worry about it. So hopefully in December, you guys will see the new digs. Who knows? Maybe I'll do something earlier, but I'm thinking in December is when I'll finally have it all set up, figured out, and I can start filming over there. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so very much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget, you can follow me over on Instagram. I'm LadyKatie92 over there, and I post reels, up close eye pictures, all that sort of thing. And with all that said, Said, that's gonna do it for me. I'll see you guys very soon in my next video, hopefully tomorrow. Bye guys.